ABPF has gone from a kernel innovation to one of the most powerful building blocks in modern infrastructure. But like any fast-moving technology, advancing safety and efficiency is critical if you want to see eBPF deployed more broadly across enterprise environments. The eBPF Foundation recently announced $100,000 in research grants to support exactly that. And today we have with us Bill Mulligan, board member at the eBPF Foundation to talk about the program and why these projects matter. Bill, before we jump into today's discussion, just quickly tell our audience what is the eBPF Foundation all about? Yeah, so eBPF Foundation is about supporting and growing the upstream community around the eBPF project. So eBPF is part of the Linux kernel, and it allows us to safely extend the functionality of the Linux kernel. And the foundation's goal is to support the community around that in a multiple different ways, uh, whether that's through marketing it and growing awareness of the project, supporting it through upstream development activities, or pushing the cutting edge of what's possible with eBPF, or even just bringing the community together. It's about making eBPF the best community that it can be. Now let's talk about this grant. Has the foundation run a grant program like this before, or is this the first time? Yeah, so this is the second year of running the academic research grant program. Um, this is kind of aligns with our mission of how can we kind of push the cutting edge of what eBPF is able to do. And by supporting academic research, uh, we're really you know, experimenting with new ways of using eBPF um, that people didn't think were possible before, didn't think of before. And so after the success of the program last year, we decided to run it again this year. How much interest did you see? Roughly how many proposals came in? Yeah, so we had 27 applications from 21 different universities from all around the world. I think this is really exciting for me as a board member because it really shows really the broad awareness of eBPF and the excitement to you know drive into lots of different areas of research around eBPF. What led to selecting the projects that were selected? What were the criteria? What stood out for you? There's a lot of different criteria that you can look at. Um, for us, it's aligning with the upstream goals of the project. So one of the things that we really care about as the EBPF Foundation is, you know, proving out the safety of EBPF. You know, really why EBPF shines as a technology is because the it allows us to safely extend the functionality of the kernel, unlike uh, a kernel module, for example. And so it does that through the eBPF verifier and other mechanisms too. And so anything that we can do to increase the security and safety of eBPF really helps the technology stand out. So that's why we chose the first one. It's how can we make sure that what we're doing with eBPF won't crash or otherwise harm the kernel? And how can we basically prove that out to people that want to use eBPF? And then the other side is like that programmability, you know, like what, how can we show kind of like the power of eBPF in terms of reprogramming the kernel to do things that weren't possible before, make things better. Um, and obviously like a huge area of interest right now, especially with the growth of AI is like, you know, we're building all these data centers. How can we make sure we're actually using the resources efficiently? And so eBPF in the kernel has a lot of introspective capabilities. And so we're looking at like uh, what the example that we funded was actually looking at uh, power management in data centers. And right. And when you think about like these large hyperscalers, even like a couple percentage improvement can be like they have to build less like data centers. Right. So that's that, that's kind of crazy. And you can scale it down to smaller workloads, too. And also if you're scaling out to the edge, it does it. So it's really proving out the performance. If you're able to reprogram, can you reprogram program it better? And so that's why we chose the second one, too. What does the completion of a program or grant looks like since the grant isn't perpetual? How do you define when it's over and what was achieved? Yeah, definitely. I, I think this is kind of an interesting thing, um, is how can we make sure that we're using our money effectively? And I think especially with something like academic research, there is like a question like, right, if it's an experiment, not all that's going to work out. I think the EBPF Foundation takes two different approaches with this. There's some things that we know that need to be done in the upstream community, and it would like be a big benefit for the community. So for things like that, um, like improving uh, like testing in the uh, eBPF ecosystem or adding support for additional like platforms like uh, ARM or RISC, you know, e eBPF Foundation actually provides 
statements of works where we go out and pay contractors to do specific development. Now, the goals of the academic research program is a little bit different is, right, we don't know everything that's possible with eBPF. It's a really powerful technology and we're just, you know, getting to the edge of like what's possible. And so we're going to fund what we think is interesting. And I, I think with academic research, like some of it isn't going to work out. That's the point of an, an, an experiment. Some of it works, some of it don't, but you learn from that. And so our goal with the academic research thing is, you know, we're funding smart people and they will use the money to, you know, drive interesting research in the area. And some of it won't work, won't work out. And that's not a bad thing. I think that's actually a good thing because it proves that, you know, people are really trying things that weren't possible before. And some things will become possible and some things won't. I think that's what's exciting for me as a, as a previous research scientist is like, you know, pushing forward the edge of what's possible or what we know. But like as a foundation, like we can't just, you know, <laughs> spend money for free. And so what we are looking for is like one, like outcomes, like, hey, like here's the blog, here's the progress, updating the community on what you learned, like upstream patches to the ecosystem. So adding um, like improvements to the eBPF verifier based on the work, finding bugs in the code, you know, improving the code through that way. And then I think it's also, you know, like, like growing the ecosystem. Are there more people using eBPF and research tools? Are there more people uh, using it in their PhD? Are there more people graduating with knowledge of eBPF that the industry then can then hire, right? Those are all outcomes that we look at too as the eBPF foundation. One is about like the project itself, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but the second part is about the people, the community, the enablement, and making sure that we're growing the pool of people that know about eBPF, know how to use it, and know how to really push the cutting edge with it. I think those are the kind of the two goals of the program. eBPF started as a kernel technology, but through these grants, how does it help the broader ecosystem, the project, the community, and the vendor ecosystem? When we're thinking about like what the eBPF Foundation is doing, I think it has like three specific roles that it's playing. Number one is to bring people to you together to enable collaboration. Number two is to help the upstream project. Uh, and number three is to promote the upstream project, you know, through awareness. And I really see the academic research funding falling into buckets two and three, and also a little bit one. So in terms of like helping the upstream project, right, people are testing the edges of what EPF. So an example I can give from the research funding last year was there's a proposal to do formal verification. And this is like a mathematical concept. How can we prove the verifier does exactly what it's going to do? And based out of that research, that research group actually contributed some patches back to the Linux kernel. And so then the vendors actually are benefiting from this because then they're able to say, like, we have better proof like that the verifier is keeping your kernel safe, right? So that's the direct benefit for vendors is EPF is approving through patches back upstream. And then the second part is promoting the upstream project, right? Uh, this is actually, I think, a little bit of like, how do we make sure academics are like thinking about eBPF as a research tool and providing by providing funding, they're looking at ways to apply it to the research. And so I think you can see that in the broad variety of applications, universities, and different research proposals that we're seeing is people are applying eBPF to more things. And our research program is, you know, encouraging people to look at eBPF. Um, as a lens. And then the third part is bringing people together. Um, since we started the research program, there's actually been a couple academic conferences around eBPF. And those aren't even driven by the eBPF Foundation. Those are driven by academics interested in this. And right there, we can bring people together for collaboration, kind of in the spirit of open source. And we don't have to do that as the foundation, but I see the fact that we're putting money in the ecosystem shows that there's money in the ecosystem and there's interest in that. And it's cool because it's kind of leveraging the money that we have to enable other people to be interested and you know drive collaboration and interest around eBPF too. And so I, I think it's the I think what's exciting <laughs> about academia is like one, it's like pushing forward the edge of what's possible. Then but then the other part is like People are doing it out of interest and doing things out of interest. Um, I, I think you got a, a lot of leverage about that. Like it's a lot less expensive to fund a PhD for a student for a year than to fund a contractor for a month, maybe. <laughs> right. And so I think you can get a lot out of that too. When you were shortlisting this year, what are some of the pain points or challenges where you felt these grants could really help? 
Yeah, so I think this is, I'll actually touch a little bit around how we like went about the grants too. And I, I think that'll help answer the question and also talk to about like why we kind of have the EBPF foundation in general. And so I think going back to what you said, like companies care about solving their immediate customer problems. That's what they're being paid to do. And they're like, you know, kind of like boots on the ground. How can we solve problem Y for customer X? And they're using, you know, a variety of, you know, depending on the company closed and open source technologies to do that. EBPF is one of a number of tools. And, but, you know, companies are really focused a lot more on the day to day. What the EBPF foundation's kind of like goal is, is to be stewards of the ecosystem and being able to take a much longer term view of what will benefit companies, not today to solve their customer problem, not just today to solve their customer problems, but also, you know, in the next five or 10 years to make that, make sure that EBPF is really a generational technology that is going to stand the test of time and be around for the next 10 years. And so the way that we've set up this research grant program is, and like the way the foundation is set up is that there's the governing board, which kind of manages the funding and like steering. And there's also a technical committee made up of experts in the BS, uh, in the EBPF field. So they're the BPF steering committee or the BSC. And what the BSC is, is experts from a variety of different companies saying, what will be good for the EBPF ecosystem for the next year, for the next five years, for the next 10 years? And they're the ones reviewing the proposals and looking at like, out of these ones, we have you know a set amount of money. Which ones do, you th- do we think will have the biggest impact, not just for my company solving my customer issues for today, but us as a whole working together to say, what will be best for the EBPF ecosystem over the next decade. I think that's kind of the interesting thing about foundations is they allow multiple companies to come together to collaborate and allow us to say, hey, let's not just solve my customer issues. What will help all of us solve issues that we'll all face going forwards? Since the foundation is offering these grants, what role do members and the Linux Foundation play here? Where does the funding come from and what do members get out of it? So the EBPF Foundation, like many other Linux Foundation uh, foundations, <laughs> is a membership-driven organization. So our platinum members are Isovalent, where I work, Google, CrowdStrike, Meta, and Netflix, and our silver members are Datadog and Intel. And the companies putting money into the ecosystem, one, it's like, how can we drive kind of like the long-term strategic goals of that? I think it allows us to collectively pool our resources. So it's not one company paying for all of it, but it's kind of like shared things across all of the member companies. So these statement of works, you know, it's not one company saying like, I need this specific thing upstream. It's how can we pool our resources to make sure that the things that we need to have upstream done um, are done. And the... EBPF Foundation is working to expand uh, the membership model where we have a couple things coming up that aren't quite launched yet, um, but that I'm going to be excited to talk about in the near, in the near future too. Looking ahead, how are you planning to expand this program in the future? More grants or different focus area? Yeah, so like, like I said, the three things that foundations are supposed to do is bring people together, help the upstream project, and promote the the project that they're working on. So in terms of bringing people together, what we do is we fund developer conferences to bring the developers of EPPF together, like BP, like Linux Plumbers Conference or BPF Conf. In terms of uh, promoting the upstream project, so I see the academic research as part of it. We also just launched a community and ecosystem ecosystem foundation fellowship program. So this is funding people to go and promote EPPF as a technology. Uh, very soon, we're also going to be launching a meetup program so people can go and talk about EBPF in their local communities and expanding kind of like the, the footprint there. Um, we're also working on two white papers uh, talking about the benefits of EBPF, both in production, looking at the actual numbers, what have companies benefited from this, um, and then also uh, in terms of like why companies are choosing EBPF. Um, we've done the EBPF documentary. And then the last part is, you know, funding the statement of works um, and doing things in the upstream community and doing things like security audits um, and threat models that all the companies together can uh, benefit from. You mentioned some of the core members of the foundation. What role can industry 
practitioners play to support or engage with this work since they will ultimately benefit from it? Yeah, I think the whole like industry academia partnership is is always an interesting question. I think like one of the ways that industry benefits out of this is people are learning about EBPF and using it in their research, which makes good hires coming out of acad- out of academia into the industry. So if I were like working in the industry, like for example at Isovalent, what I do is like track what these proposals are doing and look at the people doing the research. I mean, a lot of them are going to be very good hires coming out in the next couple of years, and I think that's exciting for me. Is right, the foundation is funding to train people and really not just you know kind of like uh, like uh, very junior engineers. These are highly skilled people with PhDs, and those are the type of people that. I'm going to want to hire when I'm working on, you know, very high scale, complex technical systems. And I I think it's great that I basically get, you know, the training of these people for free. Bill, thank you for joining me and sharing these insights. It's exciting to see the EBPF Foundation putting real investment behind research that can push the technology forward in a safe and practical way. Thank you for your insights. And I look forward to chatting with you again. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. And for those watching, If your team are working with eBPF, we'd love to hear from your team. So don't hesitate and reach out to us. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and stay tuned for more conversations.